In this video, we'll continue talking about solving absolute value equations. In the first video, we looked at the first three examples, and we saw that we want to isolate the absolute value expression first in the equation, then set up two equations, then solve for x. So we're going to continue that with number four. So number four, we have the absolute value of 5x equals zero. All right, so my absolute value here is already isolated. I'm going to think about what this means. This means that the distance that this expression is from zero is zero units away. So the only value on the number line that's zero units away from zero is zero itself. So 5x has to be here. Well, that means I only have one equation to set up, 5x equals zero. If you saw the last video, um, we said that one way that you could think about it would be to negate the constant write an equation, and then rewrite the equation with that same constant. But zero is neither positive nor negative, so it doesn't make sense to put a negative zero. It's the same thing as zero. So here we only have one equation. Solve this equation by dividing by five on both sides. X is equal to zero. So we only have one solution in this case. You could write that in set builder notation, the set of all X, such that X is a real number. X equals zero. For the second, uh, well, fifth equation that we have here, um, absolute value of 5x minus 4 plus 10 equals 2. Right, so let's copy that down. Once again, we're going to use the same strategy that we have, which is isolate the absolute value, set up two equations, and solve. Uh, so here, I'm going to subtract 10 to isolate the absolute value. Absolute value of 5x minus 4 equals negative 8. All right, now this statement tells me that the absolute value of some expression 5x minus 4 is equal to negative 8. Now, if you remember the definition for absolute value, I'll bring that back up. So our definition for absolute value uh, is the distance between a number or an expression and 0 on the number line. Since it's a distance, the distance can't be negative. We don't measure a distance using a negative value. So it doesn't make sense for the absolute value of a number to be negative. So if we are looking at a statement that tells us that absolute value is equal to some negative value, well, that statement is never going to be true. So this is always false by the definition of what absolute value means. Absolute value can't be negative. So if this statement is always false, no matter what value of the variable that I plug in, then that means I have no solutions. So the solution set is empty. So you can write that either as empty set in words. You could uh, use a symbol for empty set, which is either the empty set notation symbol or the symbol here. Uh, depending on the homework site, uh, sometimes you are asked to write your answer as DNE for does not exist. So all of those mean that there are no solutions. Okay, uh, in our next example, oops, we were on number six. Here we have the absolute value of 6x minus 5 equals the absolute value of 3x plus 4. So you have two different absolute value expressions, and we want them to be equal to one another. Again, in this class, we're thinking, always thinking about the meaning, uh, not just going through the motions of solving uh, equations. We always want to think about what the equations are telling us. So this is telling us that we have two expressions that are the same distance from zero on the number line. So let's think about, again, what that means. So I have two expressions. They are the same distance from one another. So let me begin to draw a sketch here. So I have zero. Now I don't know uh, how many units either of these are, right? Because I only know that they're the same distance away. So if I count out some units here, and then I count out some, I want to go the same distance from here to here. So we have the same distance from zero. Right? 
but maybe I have one on the positive side of zero, one on the negative side of zero, but they're equidistant from zero. So it is possible that um, one expression lives at one of these locations and the other lives at the other one, or it's possible that both of these are at the same location. So there are two equations that we're going to write the two equations are going to tell us that either the two expressions inside are equal to each other, so 6x minus 5 is equal to 3x plus 4, or one expression lives on one side and the other expression lives on the other side of 0, but the same units away. So one expression will be the negative of the other. Uh, so our second equation could be written as 6x minus 5, is the negation of 3x plus 4. Fit that in there. And again, by putting a negative around one of my expressions, this just tells me that whatever sign or whatever number this side happens to be, this side is the opposite sign. That negative means opposite. It doesn't necessarily mean that the value is negative. It just means it's the opposite of whatever you have on this side. So my two equations would look like this. The first one again that I've written says that the two numbers are equal, the two expressions live in the same place. So let's solve that first. Uh, I will subtract 3x on both sides. 3x minus 5 equals 4, which means that I now have to add 5 to both sides. 3x equals 9 and then divide by 3, and I have x equals 3. So one possible value for x would be 3. Now I want to solve the other equation here. Uh, so this negative needs to be distributed first. Let me rewrite that. 6x minus 5 equals negative 3x minus 4. All right, so now I want to uh, isolate x, so maybe I will add 3x to both sides. Let me just separate this a little bit. 9x minus 5 equals negative 4. So then I'll get the constant on the right-hand side. 9x equals 1. Divide both sides by 9. And I have x equals 1 9 so there are two values that would make this original equation true. Uh, either x is equal to 3 or x is equal to 1 9th. x equals 3 or x equals 1 9th. And again, you could check this. Um, take 3, plug it in on both sides. Simplify each side. Take the absolute value on both sides. Once you take the absolute value, both sides will become uh, non-negative. And then you'll check the second solution by plugging in 1 ninth on both sides, going through the order of operations inside the absolute value, then taking the absolute value, and uh, you should have the same value on both sides after the absolute value is taken. Remember that when you are simplifying an expression with the absolute value, that you simplify inside first, get it down to one number, before you take the absolute value. The absolute value does not change uh, a term to positive or negative uh, in between uh, two or more terms. You want to simplify completely first.